What is going on guys? Ryan from Living Salty here today. We got Senior Salty, of course, in the house here. We're doing some offshore trolling. Uh, finally, we haven't been offshore in a couple weeks now, so we're back out here out of Fort Pierce Inlet, trolling in about 70 to 85 feet out here, about, I don't know, uh, 10, 15 miles offshore, fishing this ledge that we found that apparently a lot of people know about out here in Fort Pierce. We've gotten a bunch of short hits already to start the day. We're fishing a brand new number six planer on our short rod. We have the number two planer on our little bit longer rod and we have a daisy chainer and a chugger out on top right now. We just got a bunch of short hits on both our Mylar strip and the Bonita strips. Haven't gotten hooked up to anything, but we've seen a lot of bait. We've seen a lot of fish blowing up out of the water and it's seeming like it's going to be a really promising day out here. No, something's definitely hitting it. Rain of fish. Looks like it got a short hit. Yep. Good. Another short hit today. Look at that. Just, just barely missed that hook. Man, that's frustrating. But I think, yeah, I think if we get, got a hit, I think we should. Continue. Right? Over that other spot. Never had it. We did. Oh, yeah, I want to just take it off and fish it without or put another one on? No, put another one on. One thing we're working to the, learning today is that the Mylar is working just as well as the Bonita strips right now. Slow us down a little bit. Just a little bit, not all the way. We got a fish on! Fish on! Woo! Number six planer in the Bonita strip. Oh, we're getting a little tangled here. Put up the GoPro. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, we're on. We're so good. Kingfish or barracuda? One or the other. I think I'm just going to walk them. Open the door. Door's open. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a nice size kingfish in the boat right there. Woo! Oh man, right every time we talk about moving, we always get a fish. We're in the middle of nothing. There we go, putting some meat in the boat. <laughs> Take a look. That's a nice size king. That's probably pretty close to the last king we caught, right? Same size? I think it's a little bigger? Nice. Finally, we got a fish to actually want to fully commit to our baits today. We are 0 for 4 all on short hits today. And we finally got. Oh. We finally got a fish in the boat. There we are. There's our nice kingfish. Might be one of our best kingfish. Might be close to that last kingfish we caught, but nonetheless, a beauty. And it is meat in the boat, so that is what counts here today. Definitely, definitely a keeper. Definitely a nice fish there. Woo! We got a fish in the box before noon, so that's a good day here for us. Let's show you guys what we got going here. Kingfish takes up the entire kill box we got up here. We're gonna get them on some ice. I think that's our biggest kingfish because I don't think our last kingfish I think was our biggest and that one didn't take up the entire cooler like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that is probably our PB kingfish which is awesome because uh, last time we cooked up some delicious fish tacos so we're gonna be cooking up some good fish again with that. Now the good part is that everything else today is a bonus and uh yeah, we're gonna go try to catch some more fish. We're gonna stop trolling because we've been trolling for a couple hours this morning. And we're gonna hit the bottom fish. We don't have any live bait today, but we got some kingfish drifts and all that kind of stuff. We're gonna be drifting around and definitely doing a little bit of slow pitch jigging again here today since we had some luck with that last time. So we're gonna go set our drift and hopefully see you guys when we got a fish on. Senior Salty is hooked up to our first bottom fish of the day here. Our current has slowed down significantly. You can see we are drifting at 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0.2 miles an hour. Not ideal, but Senior Salty's hooked up over here now. Does it feel like a monster? 
Nope. It's got, it's got some weight, but it's not bad. Looks like a, oh my God, don't touch that. That's one of those bad ones. Those are one of the bad ones. That right there is a venomous, uh, venomous something there. I will try to throw a scor scorpion fish, something like that. Let me get the long one. This is not something you want to touch or mess with. That is venomous, really cool looking oh, though. Really cool. Look at the color. Here he is. Whoo, that thing is nasty looking. Definitely do not want to mess with him. Oh my god. Oh, I think I add that to the species list. I don't think we've caught that one before. No, I don't think we need this one. There you go. Oh, that was nice job. <laughs> that was another new species on that one. Oh, stupid Remora. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> Two fish in a row. Didn't even get a chance to cut the video. Oh, these Remora have been circling the boat all day. <laughs> Look what they're eating, Ryan. What is he oh, eating? Baby pelchers. Baby pelchers, huh? Yeah. I think we try to get that sabiki, sabiki on then. Well, second nice catch right there for you. We got a fish on and it's a monster. And that is quite sarcasm there because it is not big, but hey, it's my first bottom fish today. We got a small fish. Well, it looks like we got a little grunt kind of species. Not exactly sure. It doesn't look like our traditional grunts with the blue line and stuff like that on them. All right, little guy's going back. What do we got? Bigger than the last? Is that another venomous fish? Could be another venomous fish. Oh, that's a good, nice lane snapper. There you go. There we go. A nice little pretty fish. Lane snapper. He doesn't look very big. One of the nicer looking reef fish that we have here in South Florida. The good old lane snapper. They don't get very big. Yeah, he's not a huge fish, but... Nonetheless. Nonetheless. Nice job. Thank you. Better fish. Yeah. Let's get bigger now. <laughs> no poisonous, yeah, that's an improvement. Grunt. Yeah, it's a big grunt too. It's time we got to figure out something to do. We might be heading back in soon. It is very hot out here. Not really sure what uh, what we're gonna do here, but bottom fishing isn't good right now. We're still only drifting at 0 0.4, 0 0.3 miles an hour, and it's been changing directions the whole time. Not a great bottom fishing day, but we still have that kingfish on ice. All right, well, we made the executive decision. We are heading in. It is hot out, and tomorrow we're actually leaving to go to ICAST 2023. So I'm not sure when this video is coming out in comparison to ICAST, if it's before or after it, but there will be an ICAST video coming out soon if it's not out already. And uh, we gotta go back, pack it or stuff together because we're leaving for Orlando tomorrow morning. So we are gonna head back to the dock. This is most likely gonna be a catch and cook video. So I'll see you guys in the kitchen. the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need a bank no I'm funded play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror if he is no friend to me it's not working now maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so I can make a better me better believe in your mind cause it's everything you can mold shape find anything all it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity it's mind over everything You can see that this is actually the row of the fish. That means it, uh, this is basically this is fish eggs right here. Sometimes row is a delicacy. People like to cut up row. Oh my god, look at all that in there. People like to actually fry up row of like mahi and stuff like that and eat those. We're definitely not going to be doing this here on that kingfish. That's we got to take baby steps here a little bit, but uh, that's very cool. See, we're gonna keep playing up this kingfish. Thought I'd share that with you. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today 
Well, it is a little bit after we caught that kingfish. I think it's about uh, five days later or so. We caught that kingfish actually the day before we went to ICAST. So ICAST should have been last week's video. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you guys go check that out. It is the largest fishing trade show in the entire world. My first year ever going had an absolute blast. So make sure you guys go check out that video after we finish up here in the kitchen cooking up this delicious kingfish. So because we did catch it a couple days ago, we ended up just freezing the kingfish. So we have our frozen kingfish right here. And if you watched my last kingfish catch and cook, uh, we did a method to eliminate the taste, um, the fishy taste of a kingfish by doing what's called a milk bath. So we've had sitting here all day, our kingfish sitting inside some milk and salt, hoping to get the taste away. So it's gonna be a little bit of a test because I've never done the milk bath with a frozen kingfish. So this was frozen, I took it out of the freezer, added the milk and salt, let it sit all day so it thaw out with the milk and salt. Hopefully it's not too frozen anymore. It doesn't really feel like it though. Um, so we're gonna see if the milk bath still works even when your fish is frozen. Today I'm feeling like coconut. So we are going to be attempting a new fish fry that I've never done before and that is a coconut crusted fish fry. So we have some unsweetened coconut flakes here. We have some lime juice. We have some and some coconut milk over here. To pair with this coconut crusted kingfish, we are going to be making a key lime sauce. That's where the key lime juice comes in today. And we are going to be serving it over coconut rice. So it is coconut, coconut, coconut today. We got the apron on now, so it is time to get cooking. We got our panko and coconut mix. We got our coconut milk and we have our flour. So we're gonna drain out our milk and salt bath here out of the kingfish and rinse off the flays. We're gonna cut them up to the right sizes and then we are gonna dry them off and then go through this process here of dipping it in the flour, into the milk, and then into the coconut panko mixture. All right, let's get started here. So we cut ours into about finger length pieces just because it's gonna cook easier. And we're gonna start by drenching it in the flour over here. Getting it completely covered, just like so. We're gonna move into the milk. Usually at this point we're doing egg, but today, since it's coconut, we're doing coconut milk. That flour just helps the whole thing kind of stick on together. Now we're going into the panko and coconut mixture. We're gonna make sure we push it on. And do you wanna make a note, I almost bought sweetened coconut while I was in the store, but I looked up a quick recipe online and it called for unsweet. And at the store it kind of made sense because the unsweet um, is was more dried out and it seemed like it would probably get a little bit crispier when you fried it. So depending on how today it goes, I think that the unsweet will work better than the sweet for this. So we will see how it goes, if that's true or not, but we're using the unsweetened coconut. And that is the final product, a beautiful coconut crusted piece of kingfish. So we're gonna repeat this step for the rest of the kingfish here. And uh, we got the rice preparing as we speak. I'll show you guys how we're making that. So what we got going on over here is some boiling water. This is for the rice. Taking a quick pause from the uh, kingfish over there. So we have water over here. This is one and a half cups of water. We have two cups of white rice here. Now we are going to add our white rice in there, just like so. And then we have to add in some coconut milk. Just looked up a quick recipe online. It called for one can, which this is the big can. So we're gonna do half of this can. So that should be good. We need to add one teaspoon of salt. So we're just gonna estimate that as about that much. And then we have to add in one teaspoon of some sugar for the taste. So we're just gonna take a little, little pinch of that. Take a little heaping pinch. There we go. Grab a fork, mix it all around. This is what we're working with in here. Appears that our vegetable oil is hot enough. So we have a plate full of the coconut crust. I mean, look how delicious this looks. Coconut crusty kingfish, I can't wait for this. All right, let's get started. Ooh, that was a little hot. 
have a timer for eight minutes. Definitely got the heat too hot. Actually, I think I'm gonna pull it off right here real quick. Well, I think the key to coconut crusted fish is to go low and slow, because I put this in, I think the oil was a little too hot and it turned really brown right away. You can... That's only after like 30 seconds or like a minute of being in there. And you can see the edges are really brown. So it doesn't look bad on the other side. Not too bad, but it's definitely not like close to done yet. So. We're gonna have to let the burner cool down a little bit before we get the next batch on. Just keep these guys off the heat for a little bit. What well, appears the other fish is gonna be done here. Here's what it looks like. Beautiful brown color, looks good. So we're gonna put it on a paper towel to dry out. Drain the rest of the oil out. There we go. There's the final product for the coconut crusted kingfish. So while we're cooking up the uh, second batch of fish there, we are going to go ahead and make our sauce, which is gonna be the key lime sauce, which we are going to go ahead and use some key lime juice, which is why it's called key lime sauce. So we're gonna go ahead with two tablespoons. There's one. There's two. Two tablespoons of the key lime juice, along with about half a teaspoon of lime zest. So that looks about good right there. We're gonna throw the heat on here on a like kind of a medium low and we're just going to mix it around a little bit. We're gonna bring this to a simmer and then we're gonna be adding in some butter. We're gonna go ahead and start adding in our butter. Two slabs at a time. It's gonna be a quarter cup of butter in total. We go in with the rest of the butter. Now that our butter is all melted in our sauce, right over here, just to zest of the lime, some butter and the lime juice. Put that over here and we are gonna mix it with two tablespoons of the coconut milk. One. And we got two. We're gonna go ahead and mix that together. There we go. That right there is a full plate of coconut crusted kingfish. Let me know in the comments down below, does that look delicious or what? Well, it's all finished. I am starving. It's definitely later than I normally eat. So we are going to head dive in here to this kingfish. Don't forget guys, this is kingfish. A lot of fish that people just say they're gonna smoke, make fish dip out of because it's no good of a fish, but we got the fish here. We got the coconut rice. Let's give it a shot. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm, that's so good. So rewarding. <laughs> the outside of the fish, has a nice crunchy flavor that's a little bit hint of coconut, but it's not overwhelming. So you might think because it's coconut rice, a key lime sauce that has coconut milk in it, we drenched the fish in coconut milk and covered it with coconut, it was a coconut crusting on top. You might think it might be overwhelming with coconut, but it is not. Coconut's not a very strong flavor. So even with all that, it's not overwhelming. It is delicious. Mmm. This is so good, it's so refreshing, very light, 
Doesn't have that deep fried kind of taste where it feels really heavy. And that sauce, that key lime sauce, just brings it all together. Absolutely perfect. Well, there we are. Hope you guys enjoy the delicious making of this kingfish. Making coconut crusted fish with a coconut rice and a key lime sauce. Very first time I've ever made this recipe. If you guys did enjoy and you want to try this recipe yourself, make sure you guys hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing down below. If you do make it, make sure you let me know in the comments how it went for you, what you change about the recipe here, what you do differently, what we add, all that kind of stuff. Let me know down in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoy this video of this epic offshore fishing adventure catching that kingfish. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you did enjoy this video, I'm going to go ahead and recommend another offshore fishing video here out of Fort Pierce Inlet over here on the left side of the screen. If you guys like this video of this kingfish catch and cook here, I think you're really going to like that one as well. Thank you guys so much for watching again and until my next video, remember to keep moving salty.